Hi! This is my first ever video on sensor characters, that's a little embarrassing, it's been a year. But you, do you want to know how to write ESTP characters? Hero or villain, no matter, we can work with, well, pretty much everything here. ESTP is probably one of the most, if not the most popular personality choice for protagonists in action, for example. So it is already a huge chunk of media. But no matter whether you want to create a character for an action story or a horror one, romance or comedy, the rules applied to create an ESTP characters are going to be the same. So now stop whatever you were thinking about and listen up. These are the things that you will need to know in order to write an ESTP OC. Spoiler, it's not just their type description. First, you will need to know their cognitive functions and overall vibe. Second, how to write those cognitive functions in fiction, because that is not exactly the same as it is with real people. And a few very well thought out examples. Know the cognitive functions. Before we going to be talking about anything else, let's talk about those, because this is the foundation of what an ESTP is. If you are not new to this whole MBTI and personality system thing, you are probably at least familiar with the term. But let me, you know, for the sake of common sense, walk you through those cognitive functions, how they influence each other, and how this whole system works in ESTP specifically. So cognitive functions are overall acting as kind of like skill sets that a person or a fictional character uses to accomplish things in life. Those goals and dreams are very different for each person and they have nothing to do with their MBTI type. Their cognitive functions answer the how question, not the why question. Because, girl, some people mix those two up. So with ESTPs, we are talking about the following stack of cognitive functions. Dominant extroverted sensing that they use to gain new experiences, secondary introverted thinking, which they use to build logical frameworks and explanations on how the world works based on their experiences. Third slot extroverted feeling that may or may not be present. This is kind of like just the function that they will have the least amount of problems developing. And lastly, their inferior introverted Introverted intuition. Introverted intuition is the opposite of extroverted sensing, and it makes sense that they struggle with it. Because when introverted intuition is being used by, for example, NI DOMs like INTJs or INFJs to reflect on the past, they can make predictions far into the future. Introverted intuition is the best tool to help people learn their mistakes, sometimes even before they make them, so that's a problem with ESTPs. Also, I mentioned that implementing those cognitive function system in a fictional character is slightly different from analyzing a real-life human being. Now, elaboration time. As I already once said, and I will say it again and again, because it is the truth, any fictional character ever created is never going to be as complex as the real person. Yes, you can come pretty close, but the thing is, your character doesn't really need to be that. A character in a story always serves a particular purpose, which is usually to drive the narrative narrative or and grow and mature. There is more, but those are two basic reasons for any character to exist at all, basically. So in real people, we use cognitive functions as a tool to point out the tendencies and patterns of their behavior. And with fictional characters, we are going to use the naked stack of cognitive functions as a sort of a bone structure that we are going to put sprinkles on later. So ESTP's cognitive functions are extroverted sensing, introverted thinking, extroverted feeling and introverted intuition. So those people are navigating the world through sensory experience, make decisions based on logic rather than feelings, might have a good grasp of other people's vibe, and will most likely be bad at learning from their mistakes and planning long term. I mean, besides all of that, to better understand the concept, we would surely need to look at a few of the most notorious ESTP characters in media and see if we can spot some patterns. And before before we get into it, I just wanted to point out that, to my mind, ESTP is the type that is rarely, if ever, gets mistyped. And I myself consider them one of the easiest, if not the easiest, types to write. So I'm gonna give you a few very clear examples of ESTP characters, maybe a few honorable mentions, and we are also going to take a look at this one dude bro that get violently mistyped on personality database, because I know you check that website all the time. Example number one. Bayonetta from Bayonetta. 
So Bayonetta is actually one of the chillest ESTPs out there, but there is no doubt that she is actually one. I know that some of you might say, but Bayonetta is basically a ripoff of Dante from Devil May Cry. Believe me, I know that. But what are you gonna do, try to stop me? First of all, let's start with the fact that her occupation is basically a variation of monster hunting. Yes, she is a fantasy witch who is murdering space angels, but that still counts as monster hunting for me. And correct me if I'm wrong, but monster f Monster hunting kind of requires a lot of extroverted sensing if you do that for a living. And as we all know, the cognitive function that comes the most naturally to you is your actual dominant cognitive function. You could somewhat successfully train yourself to use pretty much any cognitive function, but it is not going to change who you are at the end of the day. So back to Bayonetta. She looks extremely natural being an active monster hunter. Her main way of interacting with the world is through sensory experience, so as he dom. She is also using logic when making decisions and that makes her a thinker and a TI user. She also has fairly developed third slot extroverted feeling because extroverted feeling is the function that you use to navigate other people's emotions and Bayonetta does that a lot. She also kind of falls into the category of a stereotypical ESTP a little bit a lot, but that is besides the point. Next one. I already talked about this character in my previous video, but in a different context. Look, an ESTP cat! Wow. So this is a slightly different ESTP character, mainly because Puss in Boots and Bayonetta have very different Enneagram types, but that is not what this video is about. Puss in Boots is an adventurer who is learning about life through, again, sensory experience. He is a thinker, but some people might disagree and say that one of his biggest fears is to lose himself and lose the essence of his character, which is being a fun-loving and lovable hero. So you might say that he has a strong FI, which would be wrong, since fears and motivations aren't about MBTI and cognitive functions. So his strong FI is actually just his Enneagram type in disguise, which is 3 wing 4. And that wing 4 is the thing that is responsible for him being so protective of his unique identity. On top of all of that, he also has inferior NI, and it is shown very clearly in the last installment of the franchise, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. He wasn't even counting his lives, what are you even talking about? He is living in the moment, getting all of that sensory supply, absolutely absolutely not giving a single flying heck about the future. Not getting into too much detail, let's also take a look at a few honorable mentions. Those are the characters that I would love to talk about in the context of them being ESTPs, but I don't want you to be here for hours. So, Duke Nukem, Dante from Devil May Cry of course, pretty much every single action hero movie ever, Vi from Arcane, and many others. I think at this point you kind of already have a mix of ESTP cognitive functions and their vibes. So far I think the formula wasn't some rocket science. Now, I do often check personality database and when I was editing my ENFJ characters video a few weeks ago, I was scrolling through the boys TV show page because I was making a point about Homelander and turns out that Homie isn't actually the only character from the boys that got mistyped. I'm talking about Billy Butcher. So PDB thinks that he's an ISTP and those people who typed him as an ISTP are wrong. For a character or a person to be an ISTP, it is required to have introverted thinking as their first function. This often leads to social introversion, but that's not even the problem here. Introverted thinking is the cognitive function that you would use to achieve your goals by analyzing facts and information about the outside world internally so that everything you learn fits perfectly into your grand world explanation. Butcher doesn't do that very often. With him, it's more of a collateral damage. Actually, his default behavior could be very easily described by dominant extroverted sensing. Yeah, he's a thinker, yeah, he has a developed TI, but that is not his dominant function. I think some people say that because he never does what others want from him and he always values his own interests over everyone else's. But that is, first of all, not entirely true and second, his eniotype is 8, what did you expect him to be like? 8s are actually very protective of other people and they want to be helpful, but more than that, they fear to be seen as weak. And you know, listening to everyone around you is a sign of weakness to some people, so that is why I think Butcher is actually an ESTP, just 
Enneagram 8. Oh well, I was talking about Enneagram in this video a lot, but what is Enneagram? <laughs> to get full picture on what someone's personality type is, I strongly, strongly recommend using MBTI and Enneagram and pair, and not just one thing or the other. And to do that successfully, watch this video before you write your story. Bye! I think that was funny. That was very funny. Hey.